Michaela Mayer, welcome to ESPN Deportes. And we're happy to, hi, we're happy to be with you now that you'll be facing Jennifer Hahn um, on top rank boxing on ESPN, ESPN Deportes and ESPN Plus on mm -hmm. April 9th. Um, tell us a little bit how you feel coming into your first fight since unifying the IBF and WBO junior lightweight belts. I feel great. I feel like I've hit a whole new level that I'm really <laughs> peaking as, as an athlete, as a boxer, as a woman, everything, like everything's coming together. The Hamadouche fight, I was able to really showcase my skill, showcase my versatility. And I think I gained a lot of respect from that. And I just want to keep doing that. I feel like I have not hit my peak yet. And there's still so much of Michaela Mayer as a boxer that people haven't seen. So um, I feel confident, confident going into this fight with Jennifer Hahn and I'm looking to showcase a different style of mine as well. Like my ring IQ and my boxing skills, because people saw more of the, the tough bang it out version of me, which they hadn't seen before. And that was great, but I, I am still a good boxer. That's how I originally started. And that's what I'm going to go back to for this fight. And speaking of something different, so you had to go inside to face Hamadouche, you had to adapt sort of and do something different. You've been studying Jennifer Hahn um, and she has been changing a little bit because she, she had a baby, she had to move up in weight um, and now she's coming down a class to be at the junior lightweight, but it's a little bit more natural for her. What, what are you expecting in facing Jennifer Hahn? Um, well, you know, she, that fight with Katie Taylor, I think that was her first fight coming off her pregnancy, right? Um, and so I expect her to be a little sharper coming into this fight. You know, she she shook it off a little bit. She still went 10 rounds with, you know, the number one pound for pound right now. Um, gave her a tough fight. It, I don't think it was super easy for Katie. It was tricky in moments. And so I expect her to be a bit sharper coming into this fight against me. Um, but you know, we've we've studied her, we have a game plan, we have game plan A, game plan B, and a game plan C. We always do. And yeah, I I expect the best version of Jennifer Hahn. We are not underestimating her at all. It's not the fight we originally wanted because obviously we wanted to go up against one of the other champions in my division and continue to unify. Um, but we couldn't get that fight. You know, they they didn't want the fight. So I I'm excited for the challenge and Jennifer Hahn. She just fought Katie Taylor. And I think that not looking past Jennifer, but that could get people maybe excited about potential fight between me and Katie in the future and give something to, for them to compare us with. Give them a fight that they can compare us and see where we are level-wise. What's your prediction? Speaking of Katie Taylor for Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor at the end of April, that mega fight that's coming up. Um, well, I'm excited for that. I'll be there, bought my ticket. Uh, and I said that I'll be dressed in white in the neutral corner because I really, I don't have a super, like I'm not rooting for anyone in particular. I think that they both have done so much for the sport, both completely different backgrounds. You know, Katie Taylor went the Olympic route and did so much there. Um, and Serrano has been a pro her entire career. And so they have such different backgrounds, such different styles. And I think that's what's most exciting about this fight. It's like, which style is going to prevail? Um, Katie Taylor, very high punch count, her speed. It can be tricky for a pro, uh, but I think that Serrano will, will start to catch on, close that space and then pose herself in the later rounds. But maybe Katie takes the first half, Serrano takes the second half, but I'm gonna protect, I'm gonna predict that it goes to decision. I think they're both strong and both tough and durable. And I just don't see a knockout in this fight. I'm gonna go with the decision. We'll just see who that is. See who, who performed the best in their half of the fight. Now, you've spoken about, you know, wanting to unify, continue unifying uh, the crowns in the junior lightweight division, but also what people want to see is maybe you facing either Serrano or Taylor going up to lightweight. Yeah. How do you weigh those? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, I've been very vocal about wanting to go undisputed at 130, and that's been a goal of mine, but I honestly thought that that would have already happened by now. I've been trying to get these fights done. I wanted to go right into another unification fight after Hamadouche, and um, I, I couldn't get the fight. Eddie, Eddie and Baumgartner, they said no. They want to reserve Baumgartner for Choi and have them fight, but in the meantime, Baumgartner has a mandatory first, and so 
that leaves me what a year away from unifying this division and I'm in my prime. I, I don't, I'm not going to sit around and wait for anybody. I'm also tall and strong and big for 130 and I can go up to 135. I can go up to 140. There's a lot of top girls there for me and big fights there for me. So I'm going to look in that direction too. I'm going to take the biggest fights I possibly can and taking the winner of Serrano versus Taylor would be a dream. Like that would be ideal for me. They're at the top of the pound for pound list. I'm climbing my way to the top of the pound for pound list. And I think that that'd be a great vibe for women's boxing. And I would, I would love that. And I'll take it. If that gets offered to me, I'll, as much as I wanted to go and dispute it at 130, like I'm not going to sit around and wait. I'm going to take what comes. And so I'll give that up to go up to 135. Excuse me, Michelle. Uh, Michelle, excuse me. Uh, Michaela, can you move your, uh, your phone a little bit up? Because your head is cutting up. Oh. I was going to say it would be a dream for the fans of boxing <laughs> as well. When you sorry for interrupting, but uh, no, okay, thank you. Sorry. Yeah, we don't want her to be cut off. <laughs> and we have a few more questions for you. Yeah, much, much better. Okay, go ahead. Um, so April 9th will be your second fight headlining, um, and then Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor um, close up April headlining at Madison Square Garden. Clarissa Shields, she had a pay-per-view in 2021. How do you see the growth in women's boxing, where it is and where it's headed? It's grown so much. Um, you know, when I first came out of the Olympics, there still wasn't a market for women's boxing. That was four years ago, you know, five years ago, but that was not that long ago. And since then, look how many women, I mean, Matchroom has so many women, they're doing great over there. The UK, women's boxing is thriving in the UK. Um, it's a little trickier of a market here in the United States. Uh, I'm one of the few to have a platform here. So I'm just doing the best I can to grow women's sports while I do have, what well, grow women's boxing while I do have that platform. That's always been really important to me. Um, you know, so it, but there are so many big fights now. There's so many big rivalries, which is so fun for the fans. And that's really, I think, what women's boxing has been needing. And there's no way it's ever going to disappear like it did after Layla Lee days. And, you know, um, uh, Mia St. John, you know, all, all that era of women's boxing, it kind of died off. There's no way it's going to happen this time. The talent pool is so deep. You know, we have the Olympics now. We're competing at the highest possible level, just like the men. And so we're just going to continue to grow. And I'm, I'm really excited to be a part of this era of women's boxing. Like this era of women's boxing will always be remembered. Definitely. And you've been a big part of it for, to make it get here. Um, so you'll be fighting at home and your dad is, has been and continues to be one of your biggest supporters. What will it mean to be at home and for your dad to be there? Well, my dad is, yeah, he's always been so supportive and he's, I mean, he maybe missed a couple fights here and there, but for the most part, like he's always been out there supporting me ringside. So um, it'll be no different this time, just a little closer to him. And I haven't gone away from California for so long. You know, I, I left when I was 19 with an Olympic dream and now I'm coming back as an Olympian, as a world champion. And so at first I was like, man, do I, do I still have fans out there? Because I really haven't lived there in so long, but people have been so great. And I, there's so many people coming out that I got, I didn't even think they'd be making the time and effort. So um, that's awesome. I can't wait. Uh, it's going to be a great arena too. It's like half indoor, half indoor, half outdoor. So I'm excited for that vibe. My best friend, Jenny Fuse, who I came up training the amateurs with, she's making her pro debut on the card, which is finally we're back together after four years. Uh, so this is going to be fun. It's going to be a great card. I'm really excited. Excellent. Well, we'll be watching. We'll be having you with us on ESPN. So thank you so much, Michaela Mayer, 16-0. Um, and 0, So looking to continue unbeaten um, against yes. Jennifer Hahn on ESPN, ESPN Deportes and yes. ESPN Plus on April 9th, 10 o'clock Eastern, but local time, 7 p.m., at the hangar in Costa Mesa, California. Yes. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Talk to you guys later.